As Catholics, we believe saints are in heaven. That is why we, the representatives of priests in Northern Diocese here in Nigeria, are all here for the training on causes of saints. As part of our activities, we are taking a walk into the compound of late Archbishop Gabriel Gonsum Ganaka, the former Bishop of Jos, who was born on the 24th of May 1937 in Pangshin, ordained a priest on 4th July 1965 and ordained bishop on 9th September 1973 and died on 11th uh, November 1999 at New York, United States to have a look at his compound and see where he lived his life. Even before I went to Rome, I don't know how it happened coincidentally that uh, I was building a house. Actually, I was I worked closely with Archbishop Kadaba. So I was building a house in Gadaji, a church here. If we stand up here, we can see the roof of the house I built there. And I was because the bishop, I was serving as one of his secretaries, and he wanted me close to the house so that I could be coming in here. So he created an house station here and gave me. So I started building the church and the house. Coincidentally, that was when. The chapel, there was a chapel here. The chapel was being renovated. Some day, Reverend Sister, with a lot of tea, said that the chapel was not good enough and wanted to renovate it for the artist. And they started doing the work. And uh, I was still building that church. Coincidentally, that happened that the tabernacle Kagama I mean, Ganaka used was given to me. So the tabernacle is in that church, you get that view. The, the, the altar in his chapel was given to me. The altar of Gadaview is actually the altar of Gadaka. Mm -hmm. Many people don't know. I think I've told the parish priest already, and thank God I'm saying this now. I just forgot that some of these relics were there. And they gave me a lot of his chasubus. The chasubus I started the church with were mostly Ganaka's chasubus. I don't know whether they are still there, and I think we we'll have to look at whether we we'll have to retrieve some of them. Yes. yes. Because at that time, the Archbishop uh, just since, gave me those things. Since the course has begun, mm -hmm. I yes. think it's necessary to retrieve that some everything. Of them. Mm -hmm. He once used mm, shoes, clothes, whatever mm. we can do, or the the yeah, so can, can get hands on. I think I think that's what I will do because yes. I, I was given most of those things. Yeah. The tabernacle is there. The altar of Gadaview is actually the altar that was here. Those cannot be. Yes. No, no, those ones will remain there. There will be a pilgrimage center. Uh, those ones will remain there. At least we preserve them. I think G G Kagama had that in, in view. When you said I should take those things, and it was It's fine. So there used to be a route. You can, you can follow the road. There's a route, there's there's a route there's going to the chapel. Uh, you can see all those old buildings. Actually, yes. this was a mining quarters. And when the miners, yes, actually the miners, when they came, he bought it from the Catholic <laughs> Archdiocese of Just, got it from the miners through um, Regent Tim. The miners were living around this area up till. Um, Mustafa Balewa, this um, Mustafa Balewa, very strong house. Um, it was, this was called the Giant at that time. It was all the, the way. So I think when when the white people came, when the white missionaries came, they felt it was secure for them to to live among their people. Uh, so they they bought this place, and you could see that the structure. If you go into Mustafa Balewa. This is Father Collins, and uh, he's going to tell us just a bit about this chapel. And uh, Father, you are welcome. You are all yes. This chapel is called the Sacred Heart Chapel. It is built within the Sacred Heart Pastoral Center. And it was also actually conceived and built by the late Archbishop Gabriel Nelson Ganaka. In this chapel, he celebrated many masses. He celebrated even daily masses. And particularly, this chapel was known for the reparation mass when he was alive. Every Thursday, if he was in Jos, he made sure he came to celebrate the reparation mass, which was highly attended by the laity. And he had very strong contact with the laity. A lot of devotion started in this place. Um, actually, the adoration, the perpetual adoration to the Eucharist in Nigeria, not really started here, but this was one of the few chapels where we had perpetual adoration around the country. And people came, and up till today, 
we still have the perpetual adoration. Masses, when we have masses, we take out the blessed sacrament. After that, we put back the blessed sacrament. It's 24 hours adoration, and there are always people in this chapel. It is known for the perpetual adoration. A lot of devotions came up. For example, the Divine Mercy devotion was actually strong in this chapel, and it's still strong. The picture of the Divine Mercy is still there. It's one of those devotions that the late Archbishop promoted strongly in this place. And then we have now the, the, the Thank You Jesus Rosary, which he introduced to the people, and it is gaining fame a lot in this place. It's just a simple way of praying, asking, just thanking Jesus for everything he's doing, and hoping that hoping strongly that thanking him he will do more because we also know that even when things are not good for us we must learn to thank him because we trust in his mercies we trust in his providence we trust in his wisdom in everything so this place was central to the life of archbishop gabriel gosun ganaka nobody can talk about archbishop gabriel gosun ganaka without making reference to this chapel and everything he did in this place he built it and he started devotions in this place. He made this place popular. He made this place the center of worship. Thank you very much. Actually, my father was the one that uh, organized the courses of saints that has gathered some of us here. Father, can you just, in just few words, tell us what these courses of saints entails, especially in our lives as uh, Christians, especially Catholics? Actually, we are all called to be saints by our baptism. Even the scripture tells us that we are called to be holy as our Heavenly Father is holy. And our journey in life is always about struggling for this holiness as God has commanded us. But there is the universal sainthood of the children of God, which comes with baptism. Each one of us, by our baptism, we are called to be saints. And we share in the holiness of God, which He generously does with us. But then there is what we can call the canonized sainthood or holiness. This is, these are people who have been seen by the church, have the church has discerned through the will of the people, the popular um, um, devotion of the people, that the people feel that these people live their holy life in life, in death, and after death, there were signs of holiness in their lives. And basically the church um, canonizes them saints for three things. The first and most important one is that they are models of holiness. They become people we can imitate. And then when they become saints, they pray for us, as normally we know in the communion of saints. But we also know that we venerate the saints because of their holiness. So we called for this meeting, and they, actually the bishops of northern Nigeria felt that there are cases in which we have to investigate to see the holiness of the lives of these people to become inspiration for the people of northern Nigeria. Particularly now that we have a lot, lot of killings of Christians, the persecution of Christians, the martyrdom of Christians. So we are not only talking about martyrdom, actually, but we know that at this time, um, there has been the persecution, a long persecution of Christians and martyrdom. And that is why we called, the bishops asked me to help in training priests from the different dioceses of Northern Nigeria, so that they can go back home and begin to make Take gather information, discern with the people on possible causes that we can present to the, to, the, to the church, asking the church to recognize them as models of faith, especially for our people. We need them so that they can tell us, they can show our people that it is possible to live this life despite the persecution, despite the, 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 the difficulties a lot of Christians go through in Nigeria. That is the essence of this. For the case of Gabriel Gonsum Danaka, you know there are two tracks to sainthood actually we have the track of the holiness of life in which those people call them confessors and then we have the track of uh, the martyrs the case, um, case of gabriel gosun ganaka we are following the track of heroic virtues so it was not a matter but he displayed we feel that he displayed heroic virtues and these are the investigations that are going on so that we can provide to the people and to the church can present to the church these possibilities that he is there, he lived a, he lived his, his life in a heroic manner, he lived Christian virtues in a heroic manner, in an uncommon manner. Um, then we have the cases of martyrs and people who were killed for their faith. And we know that in this our country that some people 
were killed basically because they were Christians and they defended their faith till the last day, the last moment. They never denied their faith. And these are people who want to see how we can present them as models to other Christians. Thank you very much, Father. And uh, Father just said something about the thank you, Jesus rosary. So I call on you wherever you are. Learn to get those rosaries and pray it. For the word of the Lord said, in all situations, we should give thanks to God. Why don't you say thank you, Jesus? Father, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, God. God. Thank you, Jesus. It's wonderful to be here uh, in this uh, very great building that showcase the person of uh, Gigi Ganaka. I'm actually blessed and uh, I would also want you to be blessed uh, with me to have come to know Gigi Ganaka and to be in a place that was established and built by him himself for the sake of holiness. And wherever you are, I call on you to just simply say, thank you, Jesus. So mommy, can you say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hi, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> So wherever you are, all over the world, please join me to say thank you, Jesus, and try to promote thank you, Jesus, because those were the words of Gigi Ganaka. And uh, for you to be able to live, to appreciate God, we always need to say thank you, Jesus. Father, can you just give us the response of the rosary of Gigi Ganaka? Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Father, just, can you just remind us of one of the words by Gigi Ganaka? Yeah, Gigi Ganaka, as a seminarian during retreat, all we know about him is he said something like a saint, a scholar, and a gentleman. That is what a priest is supposed to be. Oh, great. Then in his rosary, I think there is a response to Can you just. Yeah, this rosary is Thank You Jesus Rosary. That is great. Thank you, Jesus. mi pecado